Are you struggling to make your visual effects look as cinematic as your favorite Hollywood movies? Well, don't worry, because all you need are these three shortcuts that I learned recreating this war on Arrakis from Dune Part 2. <laughs> Made entirely in Unreal Engine. What's up? My name is Josh Tunin, and for the last eight years, I've worked as a visual effects artist and supervisor on movies like Star Wars, Dungeons and Dragons, and Across the Spider Verse. And I started using Unreal Engine every day on set for the virtual production of Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender. And today, all you need are these three secrets to create cinematic visual effects that you can start applying right after this video. Subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. So let's create this war on Arrakis. A ton of people ask me, how do I make my renders look more cinematic? Now it all starts with lighting, and this is where most beginners mess up. You might be thinking we need to add lighting, so let's light up our entire environment. This can usually make your entire landscapes and characters look flat and boring. Most people get stuck adding lights when we really need to focus on creating shadows. So if you want an instant shortcut to make contrast and shadows in your image, then place your key light behind your actor. And the same is true whether you're lighting a character or an environment. We can see our sun and create a lens flare in our shot. Now, this is great for the daytime, but the same applies for nighttime. We just need to convert our sunlight into moonlight. So just like before, let's add that key light in behind our actors. And now you can see all the surfaces and planes of our entire city. We can see the lights on top and the shadows behind it to create a punchy, contrasty image. Another beginner's mistake that you might be making is adding in all this light across your environment, even though this doesn't make sense at nighttime. Instead of shining bright lights on top of our whole environment, looking at some references from some of my favorite movies, you can see that most of these nighttime shots are reflecting these bright lights instead of having them cast directly into the scene. You can get clever when you're in Unreal. By hiding invisible lights, we can add a bunch of well-placed spotlights and lowering the roughness in the material of our city. All the surfaces will look more reflective and shiny, and we can fake some of those cool reflections that you'll see in your favorite films. Now to take this one step further, I attached a simple point light to the ornithopter. Now, even in a high-speed chase scene, we'll have that backlight right behind our character. But let's stop right there. What's the difference between photography and cinematography? Photography is only dealing with still images, but cinematography is all about making images that move. After all, we're creating movies. Looking at the sequence from Dune, there's not a single shot here where the camera isn't moving. And I think this is the biggest difference between static environment renders and creating visual effect shots that look right out of your favorite Hollywood movies. And I think this becomes obvious if we go look back at the original Star Wars prequels. These were some of the first movies where they were experimenting with full green screen stages and digital environments. You're doing lines against a blue curtain and it's really hard work. I mean, it's difficult to make that believable. I don't know if I have. Pretty much every set has blue screen, even if it's just out a window or something. It's everywhere. People say, why am I doing it? it you know, the real question is, why not? But I think the biggest reason some of these shots don't hold up isn't because of bad visual effects. It's because we have two actors standing still in the middle of this room with a static camera. So let's start by animating our cameras and our characters. First, I'm gonna start by animating the characters, our ornithopters, and we're just gonna set two keyframes to have it fly through space. Then let's add some rotation so we're getting a little bit of movement in our flight path. Now to animate the wings, something really cool inside of Unreal Engine is that you can put a sequence inside of a sequence. So I can just focus on animating the wings flying up and down and I can just click and drag this into my new timeline to start combining the two together. Super easy. Then we need to animate the camera. Try to think how would a real camera operator shoot this scene? How far away would a plane or helicopter have to be to capture this footage in real life. What type of lens would that camera operator use? The key here is to start simple. Start with two or three keyframes to block in your shot and get the timing down before you add in 10 or 15 different keyframes. Then continue to refine your timing until you're happy. But to take this to the next level, a little secret is that you can generate camera shake entirely inside of Sequencer. If you want to mimic real life handheld cameras, that camera's moving up and down, rotating left and right, you want to add noise to the 
translation and rotation of your camera. You need both to create realistic handheld camera shake. We're just getting started. Now we have our animation, but we're missing something huge. We're creating a war scene, so we have to add explosions. This is where a lot of people mess up. If you want your renders to look as good as your favorite films, then the name of the game is photorealism. People think we need to use video game techniques to create our visual effects, but that is not the way to approach filmmaking in Unreal. Most people don't know it's super easy to add footage into Unreal. I got these explosions for free from my buddy Alex over at Compositing Academy. By creating an image sequence in Unreal, we can load in any footage and even use ones that have high dynamic range. Just drag that image sequence into your viewport and then drag that into Sequencer. Now you can slide this left and right just like an editing timeline. Perfect that timing, change the size, scale, and rotation but we're not done yet. To take this one step further, we could add in point lights right where our explosions are and animate them brighter to make these explosion blasts feel huge. Now they cast light dynamically in the environment just like the real thing. I also modified the material and added a depth fade node so I could slide this anywhere around our environment without getting any hard edges or seams. It's a simple trick, but just animating the intensity of these lights and timing them to the movement of our final explosion, suddenly this pretty simple trick starts to become convincing. Now we get this interactive light on the environment, on our atmosphere, and casting onto our ornithology. This is why Unreal Engine is the ultimate filmmaking tool. You can make all of these adjustments all in real time, just like you're on a movie set. Rendering in Maya, Blender, or Cinema 4D can take minutes or hours to render out a single frame from your movie. It becomes impossible to imagine making a 10 minute, 20 minute, or 90 minute film. But when working in Unreal, it's not two times or 10 times faster, it's exponentially faster because we're not waiting around for our final renders, we're focusing on the creative parts of visual effects and filmmaking. We're not done yet. If we want our shots to look photo real, then we need to make sure our renders look just like a photograph, meaning matching all the imperfections that you find shooting through a camera lens. That means we have to add in lens flares. Don't worry, we don't have to go crazy with this, but we do have to add something if we want our shots to look photo real. Unreal Engine has some lens flare presets, but these do not look photorealistic. Again, we're using these video game techniques and trying to pass them off is photo real and it's never going to work. So to amplify these explosions, I found real life footage and images of lens flares and lens dirt so that I could composite them with my final shot. By animating these with the impacts of each one of the explosions, we can start to create something that looks perfectly photo real. This is that hidden step that will make your shots look true to life. Whether it's night times and explosions or adding in a lens flare for your sun, you cannot skip over this. As a last step, I threw on my one click compositing template. This adds in 10 different lens effects that you'll find in every single photograph. All the things that I add in every single time when I'm working on Hollywood films. I combine all of these settings into one template with easy to use sliders. So you can apply that feature film look to your Unreal renders. Look, if you're new to filmmaking or you struggled learning Unreal in the past, I believe anyone can start making Hollywood level films using Unreal Engine 5. Al, well I've already helped 500 artists just like you start making films from home inside of Unreal Fundamentals. You can go from a complete beginner to an Unreal filmmaker in just 30 minutes a day without knowing how to code, how to model, or how to animate. And by the end, you'll be able to create your own movies that look just like your favorite Hollywood films. Get started right now at unrealforvfx.com slash fundamentals or click the link down below and create your own visual effects and films today. Let's take a look at the final shot. I hope that gives you some ideas on how to level up your Unreal renders and make them look like your favorite movies. My last video, I built this entire environment in just 24 hours inside of Unreal 5. If you wanna see how I did it step by step, join me in my free Dune Masterclass over at unrealforvfx.com slash Dune. Click the link in the description and sign up today. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel for more visual effects and filmmaking videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.